Hi guys, today is 28th October 2018 and this is a daily current affairs brought to you by Neo Yes. And our topics are bunny, grasslands and maldaris, aloe vera and electoral bond scheme 2018, Pulikat Lake and on MapEdu program we have the Ramsar wetlands of Himachal Pradesh and PQRS that is previous question revision series. And our very first topic is the bunny grassland and maldaris. So the bunny grassland is in the verge of severe drought in the recent time. And this drought was after 13 years of time or the drought was in the first in the 13 years time. And the community living in the bunny grassland, they are called as maldaris. Maldaris are leaving their village because of this drought. So this is in news because of the fact uh, bunny grasslands are facing a severe drought and the community living in the uh, bunny grassland maldaris are leaving their village because of the drought or the scarcity of water. So we need to focus on two points. One is the bunny grassland and second one is the maldaris. Bunny is one of the Asia's largest grassland in Asia and it is located near the great Ryan of Kachin, Gujarat. So, Bani is the largest grassland of Asia which is located in the great Ryan of Kutch in the Gujarat region. And the grassland is very popular for its rich wildlife and biodiversity. And the, uh, currently we have we are protected Bani grassland under the protected or reserved forest category. So, Bani is in the is near to is a grassland or Asia's largest grassland located near the great Ryan of Kutch which is in Gujarat and it is currently protected under the protected or reserved forest category. The Wildlife Institute of India WII has identified that bunny grassland is one of the last remaining sites or habitats of the Indian cheetah. So bunny grassland is one of the last remaining habitat of the cheetahs in India and this is the bunny grassland. And the vegetation of bunny grassland mainly depend on the rainfall. And the vegetation may vary from long growing popes and halophytes. Halophytes means that uh, the plants which are uh, salt tolerant. The um, plants which can live in extreme salt conditions are called as halophile or halophyte. So the vegetation includes low growing popes and the halophyte and some scattered trees and shrubs, scrubs are also there. And the grassland is home to the various mammals such as Nilgai, Chingara, Black Buck, Wild Boar, Golden Jackal, Indian Wolf, Asiatic Wild Cat, etc. So the mammals include Nilgai, Chingara, Black Buck, Asian Wild Cat and Indian Wolf, etc. And we studied about the bunny and now we need to focus on the Maldaris. Maldaris are tribal herdsman community living in the Bunny area and originally they are not, they are nomads. Originally they are nomads but when they came to settle in the Gir forest area of Junagad, they, uh, they said to be known as the Maldaris and Maldari, Mal means cattle and Dari means keeper. So they are keepers of the cattle. And they keep various cattle including the sheep, goats, cows and also camels. And I already told you they are also in the Gir forest and uh, almost 8000 numbers of Maldaris are present in the Gir forest region. And they live in the small mud houses in the forest with no electricity, no water connection and no access to education or health care. So they are living in the difficult condition. They are live. They live in the small mud house without any access to electricity and water or health care. And the main livelihood of these Maldari communities uh, is by uh, producing milk from their cattle. I already told you they have uh, they have rears or they are keeping various cattle. And the milk production. Milk production is the main livelihood of Maldaris. And also they grow vegetables and. Uh, collect wild honey. So um, by selling this milk and wild honey, they purchase goods or they purchase goods for their livelihood, mainly food grains. They, they, the Maldaris 
trade their produces mainly milk and wild honey in the and various other local produces in the particular market and they purchase the essential items like food grains and one of the feature one of the notable feature is that a, is a bunny buffalo bunny buffalo is a uh, is an indigenous or, or locally developed breed or uh, breed of buffalo developed by the maldaris in the particular region of the bunny grassland so our first news is about bunny grassland now bunny grassland is facing a severe drought and the community that is maldaris are leaving their villages in order to overcome this drought and our next news is about aloe vera and recently the researchers have used aloe vera gel in order to separate oil from water so the aloe vera gel is recently used by uh, researchers in order to separate the oil from water we know that oil spillage in the water bodies is a major concern oil spillage in the water bodies is a major concern so we have used some alternative artificial method for removing the oil spillage but aloe vera uh, researchers found that aloe vera can be used to tackle the issue of oil spillage or remove the oil from the water and aloe vera gel is the first naturally occurring material that can be used to separate the oil from the water and the study also found that the oleophobicity oleophobicity means repelling from the oil or the, or the tendency of a substance to repel from the oil the aloe vera gel can maintain its oleophobicity even in the harsh conditions the study also found that the aloe vera gel can maintain its oleophobicity even in the harsh conditions such as extreme heat or cold and extreme acidity or uh, alkaline situation so in all conditions aloe vera gel can be used as a uh, oleo oleophobic or can be used to separate the oil from the water and one of the main advantage of aloe vera is that aloe vera is a naturally occurring substance so rust or rust or uh, substances are uh, oleophobic substances are artificial aloe vera is a naturally occurring substance so it does not poses any threat to the environment so uh, researchers recently found out that aloe vera can be used for um, aloe vera gel can be used to separate oil from the water and it is a naturally occurring substance so we need to focus on the word or the concept of aloe vera and uh, aloe vera is a succulent plant which mainly lives in the or which mainly grows in the tropical climate uh, all around the globe and it is cultivated the aloe vera is cultivated for agriculture as well as the medicinal uses so uh, i one of my cousins uses aloe vera in order to treat her pimples and aloe vera can be used in various products like beverages skin lotion cosmetics and ointments and the uh, but a point to be noted is that aloe vera is good in the various aspects or can uh, have a lot of medicinal values but the aloe vera ingestion or aloe vera consuming or oral con consumption of aloe vera may cause harmful because the aloe vera gel ingestion or non decolorized liquid aloe vera is a carcinogen carcinogen means that a substance which uh, which create cancer or which may cancer so the oral ingestion of the non decolorized liquid uh, aloe vera may cause cancer so it is not suggested to intake or consume orally this uh, our news is about the aloe vera and the researchers have found that the aloe vera gel can be used to separate oil from the water and is the first naturally occurring substance used to separate oil from the water and the oleophobicity of aloe vera can be can it can maintain its oleophobicity in any extreme kind of conditions so since it is a naturally occurring substance it cannot cause any harm to the environment also aloe vera is a succulent plant which uh, which is grown in the tropical climates uh, all around the globe and it have both medicinal and also agricultural values and this is the aloe vera plant aloe vera plant and it's very common in the market you will get any uh, lot of aloe vera based products in the market and our next news is about electoral bond scheme and the main intention behind the electoral bond scheme is to make the donations to political parties more transparent it is a one of the main issue uh, faced by indian polity or in in the case of elections is that the donations extensive 
or excessive donations to the various political parties and that are not accountable. So, in order to make the donations to political party more accountable and transparent, the government of India has notified that electoral bond scheme of 2018. An electoral bond is nothing but it is simply like a promissory note. Electoral bond is like a promissory note and if any person or any individual or any corporate wants to donate for any particular political party, he or the firm, he or she or the firm can buy the electoral bond uh, on behalf of that particular political party and the electoral bond is payable to the bearer on demand without any interest. So, uh, if I purchase a electoral bond on behalf of ABC party, the ABC party can take the electoral bond and it is payab payable to the bearer on demand without any interest. And I already told you electoral bond can be uh, purchased by any persons or any companies or any firms established in India. And under the section 29A of Representation of People's Act 1951, any political party who secured at least one percentage votes in the previous general elections of at least of the House of People or uh, at least of the uh, Lok Sabha or the Legislative Assembly of the state shall be eligible to receive the electoral bond. So, not all political parties can have electoral bonds. Okay. A political party that should be secured at least one percentage of the vote in the previous general elections whether in the Lok Sabha election or the uh, election of the state legislative assembly uh, sh shall be eligible to receive the electoral bond. And the electoral bond can be encashed by the eligible political party through the authorized bank. So, the electoral bond can be encashed or the electoral bond can be uh, reimposed by the political party by using account in authorized bank. And the government authorized the state bank of India to encash the electoral bonds. So, if I donated 10,000 rupees or if I purchased a, an electoral bond of worth 10,000 to uh, regarding to a party XYZ, the party representatives can go to, to the state bank of India to encash the money. And a feature to be noted is that the electoral bond is only valid for the 15 calendar days from the date of issue. If I purchase the electoral bond today, the electoral bond should be reimbursed or encashed within 15 days of its purchase. So, the electoral bond should be valid from the valid for 15 calendar days from the date of issue. So, the news is about electoral bonds. You know, it is in order to make the electoral system or a free and fair election and to make the donations to political parties more transparent. Any person or any corporation, corporation or any firm in India can purchase electoral bond. And the uh, concerned political party can redeem the money from State Bank of India. And also it should be redeemed at least within the 15 days of, uh, based on the date of issue. And our final news is about Pulikat Lake. And Pulikat Lake is in news because the Pulikat Lake is facing a fall in the number of migratory species or migratory birds. Pulikat Lake is the second largest brackish water lagoon in India. So, Pulikat Lake is the second largest brackish water lagoon in India and the first brackish water or the largest brackish water lagoon in India is the Chilka Lake which is located in the Odisha. And Pulikat Lake houses the Pulikat Lake Bird Sanctuary. Also, the Barrier Island, we heard of Barrier Island. Barrier Island is part of the Sadish Dhawan Space Center of Sri Harikota. The Barrier Island also located in the Pulikat Lake. So, Pulikat Lake is part of the Pulikat Lake Bird Sanctuary and also Barrier Island is located in the Pulikat Lake. And this particular Barrier Island of Sadish Dhawan Space Center separate the Pulikat Lake from the or Pulikat Lake Lagoon from the Bay of Banga. And the Pulikat Lake is located in the Nellore district of Andhra Pradesh. Also, the climate of Pulikat Lake is de mainly dependent on the tropical monsoons or it follows the tropical monsoon climate. And the mainly three rivers are act as sources to the Pulikat Lake. And the three rivers are Arani River, Kalangi River and Swarna Mukhi River. These three rivers are the primary source of water in the Pulikat Lake. And the 
I alter, I told you that the this is in news because of the migratory species or migratory birds in the Pulikat Lake decreased this year. And the famous migratory birds in the Pulikat Lake include greater flamingos, pelicans, kingfishers, herons, painted sharks and spoonbills. And the pollution is the threat to the Pulikat Lake. And uh, the main reasons for pollution in the Pulikat Lake is the uh, sewage, sewage waste, pesticides, agricultural chemicals and various other industrial effluents. And also oil spills in the oil spills in the lake is also a threat or it harms the environmental condition of the Pulikat Lake. And Pulikat Lake is a um, is a location for the shrimp farming. So the unscientific methods of shrimp farming in the Pulikat Lake and neighboring areas also threaten the uh, environment of the Pulikat Lake or it, it makes the pollution in the Pulikat Lake. So our news is about Pulikat Lake because the number of migratory birds in Pulikat Lake decreased. It is located in the Nelu district of Andhra Pradesh and Pulikat Lake bird sanctuary is part of the this particular lake and also the barrier island which is the part of Sadish Devan Space Center is located in the Pulikat Lake and this barrier island separates Pulikat Lake from the Bay of Bagga. The main three rivers that are sourced of Pulikat Lake are the Arani River, Kalangi River and uh, Swarna Mukhi River. And it includes the various migratory birds such as greater flamingos, pelicans, painted stalks, spoonbills and ducks. And the Pulikat Lake is threatened by the pollution which mainly come from the sewage industrial waste and also chemicals in the uh, chemical uh, or the unscientific method of shrimp farming and the oil spillage. And we have our another section PQRS that is previous question revision series. The question is from the 2011 prelims and the red books published by the International Union for Conservation of Nature contains the list of 1. Endemic option 1. Endemic plant and animal species present in the biodiversity hotspots. 2. Threatened plant and animal species. 3. Protected sites for the conservation of nature and natural resources in various countries. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A, 1 and 3, option B, 2 only, option C, 2 and 3, and D, 3 only. And this question was asked in the 2011 prelims and the portion is environment. We know that the answer is B, 2 only. The IUCN red books or red list consists of the uh, list or, or uh, descriptions about the threatened plant and animal species. So we need to focus on the IUCN red list. So IUCN red list is the is a list of threatened species. It is a list of threatened species and it is formed in the year 1964. An IUCN red list is considered as the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of various species. An IUCN red list mainly categorizes those animals or species into threatened in which Critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable category are there. It has two kinds of pages. One is the pink page and other is the green page. Pink pages con consist of the information about critically endangered species. Whereas the green page is used for species that were formerly endangered but they are now recurring to a another status. So, uh, the IUCN red list consists of mainly, mainly consists of two pages. Or uh, two features are there. One is the pink page and green page. Pink page specifies the critically endangered species, and the green pages are used for species that are earlier endangered. Now they are they are becoming or uh, recovering the phase of endangered. And we can guess that the number of pink pages are increasing, and the number of green pages are reducing. Anyway, this picture shows the clear idea of the IUCN red list, and we can first we can take the category all species in all species ne means not evaluated some species are not evaluated and some species are evaluated in the case of evaluated evaluated can be categorized into two data deficient that is dd data deficient and also the adequate data and adequate data can be categorized into various facts one is the least concern other is the near threatened and uh, other the threatened categories includes vulnerable, 
endangered critically endangered and also extinct in the wild and extinct so these are the categorizations made in the iucn red list you need to focus on every term in this particular list especially the near threatened vulnerable endangered extinct and extinct in the critically endangered extinct and extinct in the wild by analyzing this image you have to do a homework and you can define or you have to find the definition of each term in this particular area and mapped program is our final session and today we have the ramsar sites of himachal pradesh in the mapped program and the first ramsar site or wetland is the chandra tal wetland and it is declared as a ramsar site in the year 2005 it lies in an area of arid aridity or it lies in an arid area inside the cold desert and the name chandra tal chandra means moon and tal means lake and the name suggests the meaning lake of the moon or lake of moon and the name is uh, here used because of the because of its peculiar shape because the chandra tal lake is in crescent shape that's why the name chandra tal and also it is also home to various snow leopards and this is the chandra tal lake um, i this is very beautiful anyway and and you can see the uh, shape of the chandra tal lake it's almost like a crescent that's the name chandra tal and our second site is the renuka lake and renuka lake or renuka wetland is declared as a ramsar site in 2005 and is the smallest wetland in india so a very point a very important point to be noted is that the, it is the smallest wetland in india and it contains the freshwater springs and the karst formations it contains the fresh freshwater springs and karst formations and the name renuga is the mother of hindu sage parashurama thus the renuga lake have high religious importance in case of hinduism so renuga is a lake or which is declared as a ramsar site in the 2005 and it is the smallest wetland in india also it has high religious importance in hinduism because the name renuka is the mother of the hindu sage parashurama this is the renuka lake and our final wetland is the pong dam lake it is declared as a ramsar site in the year 2002 it is a reservoir actually it is a reservoir created by a dam in the bias river Uh, a dam that is called pong dam is created in the bias river thus the reservoir of that particular dam is called as the pong dam lake and now the name is not pong dam lake it is renamed after in after the honor of maharana pradap singh now it is the maharana pradap singh reservoir also called as the pong dam lake and uh, by covering these three we have covered the main ramsar sites in the himachal pradesh state that's all for today Thank you so much for watching. For detailed discussions and explanations, you can refer to the PDF, which is available in the description section. Thank you so much. Good night.